Fighting evil by moon. Oh, hey! Today I'm going to be taking a look at a game based on one of my favorite IPs of all time. Now, I was singing from the original series, but I'm actually going to be looking at a game based on the Sailor Moon Crystal series. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Sailor Moon Crystal Dice Challenge. It's time for another Dice Tower review with Robert Geislinger. So here we're taking a look at Sailor Moon Crystal Dice Challenge. Now this game is actually a re-theme and some modification of another game called Button Men. So if you're familiar with the game Button Men, you already mostly know how to play this game. But for those who are not, I'm going to take you through real quick how the game is played. Now this game is primarily for two players, but there are some variants in the book for playing with multiple, but mostly I just want to look at the basics of a two player game. Each player at the start is going to pick a character and there are plenty of characters to choose from. All of these are from the Sailor Moon Crystal series. And from what I can tell, they're not all here. Now I, I'm fairly familiar with Sailor Moon. Uh, actually a lot familiar. So I know that the last season that wrapped up not too, too long ago is not in here because I don't see Pluto, Saturn, things like that. But you do have the ones from the, the first few series of Sailor Moon Crystal. If they start, then each player is going to take the dice that belong to their particular character. Now the game comes with four different color dice, but it doesn't matter because it's just dice. The dice colors don't go anywhere. But for the purposes of this, I did go ahead and give Beryl the orange and green together, and I gave uh, Usagi here, Sailor Moon, the blue and red. So Usagi is going to get the is going to get two eights, two a one d ten and one d twenty. Barrel is going to get a D4, a D8, a D12, and a D20. And that's going to be their starting pool of dice. Now they do have reserve dice as well, which is something a little different in this game. And that's going to be these dice over here. Now those dice are only going to come into play if the character loses a round. And so we'll explain how that works. From here, the t get another difference is the characters will get a, an ability that is represented by a token. And there are plenty of tokens in the game, but they're mostly for specific characters. And the rule book does a good job of explaining which abilities go to each. So for Moon here, she's going to have planet power, which gives her once per game the ability to take an extra turn and barrel here is going to have crystal ball which allows her to re-roll either her starting dice or force an opponent to re-roll those and that's twice that she can use that ability so each player will start by rolling up their starting dice and placing them out in front of them so real quick we're going to roll these and in fact since this is a shorter game i'm going to go ahead and actually play probably to show you how the game works so the player who rolled the single lowest value die is going to go first. In that case, it's going to be Beryl here who rolled a two. Now in your turn, you're going to do one of two things. You're either going to do a power attack or a skill attack. Now a power attack simply means taking one of your dice and capturing one of your opponent's dice that is of equal or lesser value. So if we look at Barrel here, she has a six, a two, a four, and a seven. And they normally recommend lining these up in order just to make it easier for you but we're not going to do that here. But so she could maybe take the six and capture either of these fives, or she could take the seven and capture the fives. Either way, that would allow her to do her standard power attack. Now a skill attack means that you're going to combine one or more dice to the exact value of a die. So in this case, she could take this seven and this two and capture Sailor Moon's D20 and a nine, which actually is probably her best move because you want to try to capture those higher value dies when they're on those lower numbers and not allow Sailor Moon to re-roll them. So, and it also allow her to re-roll her D20, which is currently on a seven. So if she were to combine these two, she gets to take this nine and put it here. And that's now going to be hers and Moon will no longer have access. And then any dice that she used for it, she'll roll up again. And look, that was really good for Beryl because now she has a 17 on her D20. Moving over to Moon. Moon here has a five, two fives and an eight. Now she could get a 10 and a 13 or an 18. Nothing helps her there. So she's probably just gonna go for the highest number she can. She probably wants to leave this eight, even though Beryl can capture it, but she could take the five and capture this four here, thus getting the D10. 
and then she'll reroll this. Hopefully for a higher, she gets an eight. Now, if she wants to, she could use her planet power. And I don't think that's probably something she's going to do just yet because this round isn't really going in her favor and she's never going to be able to capture this die. So if we look here, we have a three, 17 and six. That's a nine, that's a 20. We could, well, I think the only thing that's safe at this point is to take the six and capture the five. And then she'll re-roll this, giving her an eight, putting her in a great position as well. Moon's only real choice is to use an eight to capture this eight. So she'll roll that up, giving her a two. Not the best thing in the world. Now this is interesting because she could capture this with the 17 and roll this and really not have to worry. Or she could just take this and basically get both dice either direction. So it really doesn't matter. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the 17 and capture the eight because then I roll this and as long as I don't roll a one, Moon can't do anything and she can't. So now Moon can't go and I was hoping this would happen so I could show you. So this means that Moon can't make an illegal attack so Moon has to pass her turn back to her who then could use either die, it doesn't matter, this die to capture this. Technically this is re-roll but it doesn't matter and that's gonna end the round. So now it looks like barrels won. And I know barrels won based on this, but there's still a possibility that the person that captures the last dice might not win because you're going to take the dice that you've captured and you're going to get points based on their sides. And then you're going to get half the value of the dice that you still had in your possession. Now, in this case, Moon's got a 10 and an eight. So she has 18 points. And over here we have 20. 20, uh, let's see, 30, 38, uh, 46, 66, 70. So Beryl destroyed Moon in that round. So now Beryl gets one of the victory tokens and we move into another round. But this is where it's interesting because Moon will take all of her dice, Beryl will take all of hers. But because Moon lost the round, she gets to go in here and select one of her reserve dice if she wishes to to add to her pool. And I think Moon's going to take a d20. Now that's a risky move because it, it potentially gives Beryl the ability to capture 20 points from her. But you know what? I think she's going to take her chances. So now we're going to start a new round. They're each going to re-roll their dice. And we're going to run through another round again. We'll continue doing that. Now, in this case, let's say Beryl didn't like this. Beryl could use her crystal ball and maybe re-roll all of her dice, which actually came out about the same. I think that was an eight. And now we could take our turns. And I want to, so that's Beryl using hers. And then we can look at, let's say Moon goes first, of which actually Moon won't go first, but I'll just, here, we'll make this a one and say Moon. So Moon could maybe try to jump out to a lead and maybe take the four and capture, actually, you know what? maybe take this 14 and capture this one and then immediately use her planet power and then capture this eight and then get to re-roll. Oh wait, she also would have re-rolled this one and then re-roll this one, putting her in a better position. So the game will go on until a best of three. Whoever has the most victory points, to victory tokens rather, is the winner, or rather first to two out of three. Now, as I said, the game does come with a lot of characters. We have Queen Serenity, we have some droids, we have King Endymion, the Wise Man, we have Chibi, Sailor Mars, Jupiter, Venus, Tuxedo Mass, Serenity, Neo, Queen Serenity, you get the point. We're going to be going through and have all these different characters. In addition, the game also comes with these lanyards, which have little badge holders for them, where you can play this game on the go. And I'll give my thoughts on that during the during my thoughts. But overall, again, first out of two out of three is going to be the winner. So let's look at Sailor Moon Crystal Dice Challenge. Now, as I said in the overview, this game is a retheme of the game Button Men designed by James Ernest, but it is a little more than just a straight retheming. There have been some additional changes, such as the reserve dice and even those, those special abilities. 
As to the game itself, so the first time I played this game, I had not played Button Man. And I actually hadn't read that this was a retheme, so I was judging the game solely based on that. And that's a good and bad thing. The bad side is the first time I played it, I hated this game. I love Sailor Moon, and I was super excited to get a hold of this. And about halfway through the first time I played it, I wanted to put it back in the box. And that's actually what I did. And I immediately was like, I don't like this game. And I was really disappointed by it. But then I expressed my disinterest in it online, and someone let me know that this game was a retheme of Button Man. So I looked at Button Man, and I played Button Man, and I had the same sort of feeling at first, but then I sat down and I played the Sailor Moon game again, and I realized there was more of a game here than I thought. Sure, a lot of this game is random. A lot of this game is luck. It's dice rolling. Of course it's going to be. But there's some things in this that aren't apparent the first time you play it. Because while it seemed like I just take my best die and I capture your best die and then I re-roll, there's actually a little more going on here. Actually using those skill attacks is important because it allows me to actually re-roll some lower numbers. And there's advantages in the dice I take from you. And sometimes there's advantage in leaving a higher roll die just sitting there knowing that my opponent can't possibly capture it. So as you play the game, you actually start to see these levels of complexity within your decision making that really isn't there the first time you play it when you're not as familiar with it. Again, the game is dice based. There is a degree of luck in it, but it doesn't negate the fact that this is a simple game that is actually pretty enjoyable. Now as to the Sailor Moon retheming of it, it does feel a little pasted. I'm not going to lie about that but in an enjoyable way, especially adding in those unique abilities for each character. I really liked how those lined up to those characters. And the one thing that is changed in this that I really, really liked was the fact that the loser of a round gets to bring in another die. And the rule book explains this in the same way I would honestly have explained it myself, in that when characters are defeated in the Sailor Moon universe, they tend to come back fighting harder and more powerful. And that is represented by getting an additional die. And there's actually a lot of decision that goes into which die you take. In my overview, I took the D20, but there might be times that I may not want to take the D20. Especially, you have to gauge the opponent that you're playing against. Because again, we were giving Barrel the ability to take potentially a 20 point die from us. So overall, I really do like this game which is odd considering I really, really disliked this game the first time I played it. Now, the game has some multiplayer variants in it. I haven't played through a lot of them very much. Um, they're okay from what I've seen. They're not a way that I would particularly care to play this game. But what I did find interesting was the lanyards that I briefly touched on in my overview is where you're going to wear this lanyard and you're going to maybe see someone at a convention that has one. And it's cute because it has these little extra cards on them that uh, this one is for Sailor Mercury. You're challenging me, you're all washed up. They're little punny sort of things. And I, I like puns and I love Sailor Moon. And then the back has your character card. Now, I'm not sure who's running around with dice in their pockets or maybe you could use a phone app with dice, but this will allow you to challenge somebody at a convention on the go. It's probably not something I'm going to do but it's cute that it's in the box. Overall, if you're a fan of Sailor Moon, this is probably a game for you to get. If you're a fan of Button Man and maybe just want a different theme, probably a game worth looking at as well. If you didn't like Button Man, this is not a game for you. If it just doesn't appeal to you, maybe not. But it might be a cute little game to play with kids or fans of the series. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at Sailor Moon Crystal Dice Challenge. It's helped you decide if it's something that may or may not be right for you and your game group. And I look forward to seeing you folks in the next review. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.